Welcome to Dancing with Flow. <clears throat> and I'm going to briefly introduce um, Shushma. You've probably read her official bio. I just remember smidgens of it. I know that she's the CEO and founder of um, Renonance. Did I say it right? Resonance. Resonance Consulting. She travels all over the world. She, um, what else do I know about her? She, um, she holds a license for the work of Geert Hosteed. Um, who, in my opinion, is one of the foremost theorists um, in, um, in, in difference, I'll call it. Uh, his book, uh, Culture, Culture Software of the Mind. Yeah. Culture Consequences. All, yeah. Culture Consequences. It was the only um, revelatory thing. I, I, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it, I've read a lot of books. I haven't read a lot of books. I've written a lot of stuff on diversity. They say all the same things. Um, his, he's got a, a much wider perspective than most of the people that I've come, yeah. come in contact with. I also know that she is um, um, an appreciative inquiry maven. Um, if you don't know what appreciative inquiry is, it's basically a philosophy of um, when you're consulting or dealing, you just, you're, you're a positive as opposed to um, um, the, op the opposite. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you a little bit of a personal story about um, Shushma. She does not, she's not ready for this. But, um, you know, um, I believe in karma. But my belief in karma is more the Chinese version of karma. The Chinese have a word called NUN, which means interwoven relationships. And they say that it's said that if your robe touches another man, this is the men came up with this expression. Pardon me, Deontha. Uh, that, that is deep NUN. So the very simple example is that um, if you have, if you've met someone, probably you've been introduced by some other person and visually you could make a triangle out of that. A introduces B versus C. That's the simplest version of NUN. A lot of times it's much more mysterious as to how you've come in contact with. So I think it's illustrative to talk about um, how I met Shushma, for example. And um, I'll just do that briefly and we'll get started because you don't want to hear me blab for the rest of the hour and a half. Um, I don't think, maybe you do. Uh, but in any event, um, I first met Shushma. Um, she was, um, what's the word? She was, she was querying me um, to be a member of the National Training Laboratories, NTL, which at one point was, was a very esteemed organization. And in some places it's still esteemed. Um, so she, she um, interviewed me and, um, you know, I liked her. I think she liked me because she, she didn't tell me, she didn't tell them, no, don't accept him. <laughs> in any event, uh, in the course of that conversation or the course of looking at researching her before I went on um, to have the interview, I found out that we have a mutual friend who's a dear friend of mine that I haven't seen in many years. Her name is Martha Lassley who has an organization called Leadership That Works. And Martha and I both trained to be coaches with the Coaches Leadership something uh, many years ago. And um, anyway, they're, they're very close. Uh, Shushma referred to them as their spiritual sister or something. So in any event, um, that's how um, I came into the, the field of this remarkable woman. And oh, the, the third thing I wanna say is a little bit embarrassing. Um, we, we also met face to face outside of Oxford um, in, uh, in England. National Training Laboratories for the first time had an international annual conference. And um, so you go there, I went there and um, they said, okay, your room is there. But I couldn't find my room. I had to go back and um, get somebody to tell me how to get there because I, I literally couldn't find it even though there were signs and everything. So after I got settled, it was a little bit towards dusk I noticed this small Indian woman is walking up the, up the path, trying to find her way. And I know, I said, she's trying to find her room too. <laughs> so that's a little bit about how I came to know um, Shushma. And I'm so delighted to get to know her more through this meeting. Shushma, the floor is yours. Thank you. For introducing me with so many interesting details. 
I like that. And um, he was asking me before we started, before you guys came in, that uh, how should I introduce him? I said, whichever way you want to introduce. And he says, I have a very different way of introducing. I said, please go ahead. So that's what the session is all about. So go with the flow. And so, so here we are. So thank you for uh, inviting me to your space. And uh, so I was, uh, I had designed the session with about 30 people in mind. Sorry. With about 30 people in mind. And it's typical, this is what happens when you go with the flow, anything can emerge. And so therefore this emergent reality is what excites me. You know, because I normally don't have a plan, but I do think few options that what we can do. But uh, at the same time, it is really about uh, what may happen. Okay, and I am, I never feel anxious. And I don't have fears. Like, what will you guys think? I, whatever you think, you will think, no matter what I do. <laughs> so, so this is not something that is controllable. So might as well allow myself to experience fully. So please feel free to call me Sushma. That's how I'm known, not Sushma Sharma. And I will change my name here so that you know how to pronounce it. It's a very easy name, actually. Some people call you Sush, Sush, right? <laughs> yeah. So it is Sushma, S U S H M A. You can also call me Sush or Sushi. You know Sushma, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> Because Sushi was my pet name. In India, especially from the parts that I come from the north, um, they are in the habit of shortening the names. So, so whoever meets me, whatever they want to call me, I'm okay with it. As long as they don't call me Mrs. Sharma. <laughs> Because I feel I have a different identity, not only as a family name. So I don't pay much attention to the family name. Normally, I don't even know. It's like Angelo, I know him as Angelo. I, I really don't know his full name. I mean, I see it, Angelo, <laughs> Louis, something. <laughs> so... So that's who I am. And uh, he talked a little bit about appreciative inquiry. And uh, so I will just share a little bit about it with you. So appreciative inquiry is not only about being positive, but it is looking at a system as to what's working for the system. And normally in organization development practitioner, we tend to look at what's not working. Okay, so what is working and how do we amplify that? What are the elements when any human system is at its best? And it's all about this storytelling process. And this is one part. 
Second, he talked about Gerth Hofstede's model. And I must share my story about going with the flow. So somebody told me about Gerth Hofstede. And uh, they wrote to me a letter that we would like you to come and join our program. Uh, so I found it very exciting. If somebody is inviting me. Why are they inviting me? So I wrote to them. I don't have much money. I don't know where to stay. And I, I can spend on my airfare. So they said, you don't take, don't bother about it. You just come. And we'll take care of your stay, food, everything. I said, okay, that sounds like an interesting opportunity. So, so I went. I, I had some address of theirs. And uh, which was in Den Haag. And I land up in Amsterdam. And... Uh, so they had given some instruction. Now, I, this is the first time I was there alone. And I said, OK. So I found out a train that was going. And then I took a cab. I thought in my imagination it would be a big institute and all that. I, I couldn't find it. Finally, we found it. So I went in. And uh, I was quite upset that, you know, why? They didn't send anybody. In India, if they came, we would go and pick them up. You know, so, so went and then, but very friendly lot. And uh, so they said, uh, okay, so next day they said, we want to have conversation with you about how you get trained in this and you take it forward. I said, okay. And uh, I said, but I don't have any money. He said, no, no, we will give you free. Okay. I didn't know what was hitting me. And, uh, and the next day when I went to the institute, they told me, I said, but how come, you know, they were ready to give me all kinds of materials. They also had no idea about where I come from, who I am, where do I live, nothing. So I told them, I said, uh, how are you trusting me with all of your copyright material? You don't know me. They looked at me and smiled. And he said to me, you know, this is our first test that you came on your own, that you found your way, and that you reached here, that your ability to be with the ambiguity is very high. I didn't even have their phone numbers, and there was no uh, cell phone at that time. It is in 95, 96. And I said, oh, so that is the criteria. He said, yes. So we trust you because you have been able to trust us to come without knowing us. And this is how my relationship and affair started with them. And it was beautiful. So it is whenever I trust my instincts without a plan, it works. So, so when Angelo was asking me about uh, what's the topic you want to talk about? Frankly, last, we have decided our last three months, four months back. And uh, even four months later, I had no idea what I'm going to talk about. He said, now is the time for you to decide and tell us. So I wrote a couple of ideas, and this dancing with the flow was the last one, although it was my first in my thoughts. He said, let's go with this. I said, wonderful. This is what really brings out the best in me. 
let me share that so are you aware of the t group sensitivity training no okay so i took to t group process only because there also there is nothing structured shushma i don't think they know what a t group is you should tell them okay so i can tell you a little bit this t group process was it's called sensitivity training and uh, it was started by kurt lewin somewhere in 1948 okay and so it grew and grew that's how od process also organization development also took place there and this was a process where we they felt that in a group it was actually after second world war that they were working with some of the people who had been through difficult time and so therefore they were working in the group process and they discovered that if you let people be responsible for themselves and they interact with each other the certain amount of impact they are creating on others and some impact is happening to them and that's how the relationships start to develop and by the end of seven days or at that time it used to be 15 days without structure and you know in your country also the structure is so important plan is so important so people feel very uncomfortable when the instructor tells them you know the objective so you do whatever you feel like doing and the facilitator just brings his or her observation what he sees happening confronts people shares the feedback this is you must be aware of johari window or no no okay forget just about me, it it's just me uh, yeah. I, let me let me just say one thing shrishma um what she's talking about with the t group that is the basis for a lot of the things that you experience if you go to even a supervisory training um all these kind of things um uh, really the t group thing that started like would you say after the war war um uh, that was the basis for a lot of uh, human development training yeah so it's about personal growth it is about interpersonal relations it is about group process okay but the uh basic difference is that the facilitator only facilitate what is being generated by the group okay there is no instruction to say do this do this do this so people find it very difficult to deal with this because they are used to being instructed and they they are in dependence on the facilitator so now the facilit so this is what t group is all about so so i took to it because way back uh, almost in uh, early 80s because it met my needs of freedom of authenticity of trust and of allowing yourself to embrace ambiguity this is how i had always been and this thriving on ambiguity is what brings out the best in me yeah so so this is little history about uh how i am as a person and why this topic and even when i am working with organizations i am always telling them go with the flow don't try to control see what happens see what emerges and they are quite shocked to see what emerges is more than what they ever expected people's energy is engaged their commitment is very high 
they actually end up having much more outcome than when they do the normal kind of a goal setting or whatever it is okay so so this is the process that i have been into and uh, you guys have got interested in finding more about this flow right and therefore you are here so i'd like to ask you a question which is as to what aroused your curiosity or what triggered you to know more about this whatever happened to you okay i'll answer yes um, please so uh i read the book a long time ago called flow you know by mihali yeah. chiksent mihali okay and um and yeah i found it fascinating and he did all this research and he you know he explained it all so clearly and it it fit in with my experience and i said oh this is this is really uh wonderful and i i want to um you know go further with it and then i've also studied intercultural communication and of course so i know the work of gert uh, hofstede so you so these two combines it sounded to me like you know wonderful and then you're from india so i said oh that'll that'll be interesting as well you know okay thank you yeah i also have that book but so it, that's a very nice book yeah okay i'll answer um, this is my way is so called going with the flow yeah i like to how, hear from both of you yeah i know i'm but i'm just going to jump in now and then i'll shut up um you know so um however i get i get trapped and i don't do it sometimes but i'm i'll give you one illustration um in the early days um when i was studying uh, so called holistic health and was involved in so called macrobiotics i learned a lot of sort of uh, japanese healing arts my favorite was so called reido which means the way of the soul and basically it's spontaneous movement so you basically you basically just allow your body do whatever it wants to do you know yeah. and i have actually taken that even further in terms of not knowing where i'm going going just going outside and seeing what happens and sometimes all the time when i do it something surprising and almost feels like destined happens when i do that So I know that especially in this day and age there's something about this which is very important. I don't exactly know why and it has to do also with the spirit of play. I don't know why we get so serious yeah. um but we forget how to play. We get a little older. Anyway, that's that's me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. I'll 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 say something. Um my life these my inner life these days is uh about trying to find out how to balance i have like two sides of me one is yeah can you speak like, a little louder okay yeah your voice goes uh, low okay yeah the kind Thank of the you. theme of yeah. my life these days is uh trying to find a balance um between uh finding those moments of deeper connection and going with the flow and uh wh where i find the greatest meaning and fulfillment and then the tremendous list of tasks that i feel driven by so this seemed like another chance to explore that for myself um yeah thank you so um i'm like bill i read that book some time ago um and uh it influenced me and um so i'm involved in um uh the recovery from addiction community and uh in particular um work with um recovering alcoholics and recovering workaholics and in the 12 step program workaholics anonymous uh we talk about um living and working flowly um and um 
that's my, what I strive for, is to live slowly. And I also need to live slowly in order to do my work. Yeah. Uh, so I'm an ethnographer. And um, when I go into a system, um, I, I don't know what I'm entering. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I have only my fantasies of what I will find. Uh, and often what I find is very different than my fantasies. So I have to be able to tolerate a lot of ambiguity um, because there are, are no uh, upfront answers or solutions. Rather, there are uh, things that I, I, I have to experience as they emerge and be comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Seth, I, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 a, I'm not too, too schooled, but what exactly is an ethno, what, 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 what does that mean? Uh, ethnography is um, a form of research that emerged out of anthropology. So if you're familiar with, uh, you know, the work of Margaret Mead and many of the, uh, the early anthropologists, they went into uh, cultures, they went into systems to try to understand them. And um, uh, so that's what I do with uh, educational organizations. Oh, cool. I go into them, I try to understand what, what are, what's your experience here? Uh, and how can we understand your experience uh, to you know, develop a way of working together and working on whatever it is your task is? Thank you. I'd like to welcome uh, Kay Jackson to our circle. How are you, Kay? So, um, um, you're, you're muted. Oh, no, you're not muted. So, anyway, yes, we're, yes. we're just we're basically going around at Shushma's direction and telling telling um, each other um, what is going with why the, why we came to this particular session, right, Shushma? Yeah, I came to this session. Um, well, for, first of all, let me start at the beginning. Um, my name is Kay Jackson. I live in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, which is um, in the United States. It is in the Midwest of the United States. And I came to this conference because I am very much interested in just becoming more in the moment. Not so much, I'm in a point in my life where I no longer need to be um, so much concerned with going to work and everybody else's need. I can be more attuned to where I am and what I want to do with the rest of my life and how I can leave myself open to all that I can be and what I can do for the universe. And I feel that being in the flow is a way of being with all of the universe. That's right. So thank you for sharing that because uh, as I see this process today with six of us is going to be more of exploration together. It's not as if I'm going to teach something. It is more, more or so is the process of discovering by all of us, okay. you know, because that's how the uh, transformation happens. So I just wanted to read uh, uh, just one sec. Yeah, I wanted to read one uh definition which is what you said it is from flow the the book but uh, what it says is that you may have experienced a flow state at some point that sense of fluidity between your body and mind where you are totally absorbed by and deeply focused on something beyond the type point of distraction. Time feels like it has slowed down. Actually, you're not even aware of time and space. 
you are at one with the task at hand as action and awareness sink to create an effortless momentum and some people describe this feeling as being in a zone this is the flow state it is accessible to everyone whether you are engaged in a physical activity creative pursuit or even a simple day to day task and i'm sure many of us have experienced this you know in different spaces different times sometimes when you are in love you experience this kind of a flow sometimes when you are meeting somebody or or having a very important discussion and it's so meaningful you forget the time i remember i met one lady in uh, london uh, when i was in poland i had gone to london somebody said that you and she will get along very well meet her i said okay so i called her up and she says oh i am very busy but i can meet you in art gallery for an hour i said okay let's take an hour we met and we started talking there was so much of flow that she cancelled her appointment and we were there till 6 in the evening both of us she forgot everything i forgot everything it was so much of a uh, deep connection and that day started the process between us till today we are greatest of friends i go and stay with her in london and she connects with me all the time and this to me is then you lose track of whatever is going on around you but when you are still worried and anxious and you are trying to control stuff that's when it is very difficult to be in the flow okay because your fears and your anxiety is blocking the flow it's like a big stone that comes in the flow of a river a mountain breaks and runs and then suddenly there is a stagnation in the water but then interesting thing about the water is that it starts finding its way and keeps cutting the stone until it flows but with human system this conditioning this anxiety this fears they become the block as if that is the success space if you do everything perfectly there's no mess then you will have an outcome and it's true that you will have an outcome and you might succeed too but what is possible in the flow is 100 times more because you never even think of those creative ideas when you are following a certain path i'm sure all of us have experienced that and and to me especially now when there is so much of complexity when many of these kinds of controls are taken away from us this is the time for us to understand what makes me flow what is my passion what happens instead of bringing in censorship and my inner critic who's judging me all the time you are making a mistake your logical mind is constantly blocking this flow of yours and so that is what we really need to discover and in my own uh, uh space and the work that i do i find as long as i am in the flow the my diagnosis is bang on my intuition is at its best 
I have no problem being vulnerable. Maximum is I will go wrong. So what? Maximum is they won't hire me again. Who cares? I don't care. Okay, <laughs> because I know my own strength and my essence and my centeredness. As long as I'm able to create that flow, I'm as able to follow my flow. I think things will happen much more than I expect. Yeah. So I'm sure each one of us has some such stories. You know, where you just lost yourself and you accomplished what you never imagined you would accomplish. You know, you, you were, you surprised yourself. I like you to think of some such story from your life and share. When you were in total flow, you forgot it's night or day, you're wearing clothes, you're not wearing clothes, you're hungry, you're not hungry. It's like Einstein, you know, <laughs> so, so that's the process. So I like to hear each person's story and then we'll see as to what really is going on today for you, because this is going to be more experiential. You guys know as much about these things as I know, except our perspective is different. Our way of bringing it in is different. Yeah. So anyone can start your excitement and start like like real storytelling don't give me the gist of it what were the circumstances what happened what got you lost what exactly you were on to and what happened you know all this part take four or five minutes doesn't matter because listening to your story is very important Who would like to start? Spontaneously, don't think too much. Because if you're thinking too much, you are already blocking yourself. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I, I will start. I'll, I'll start. Tell the story. Um, who, who is speaking now? Okay, go ahead. It's all right. Oh, I, I thought it was Diana, Diantha. Yes. Okay, my internet is in and out. So yeah, I'll start. So this is more um, of a story of series. Um, so it, if you uh, could raise your voice, because you're, you're very low. low. All right. J just almost this shout. Don't worry about the technology. That's fine. Okay, can you hear me now? Um, a little worse, okay. actually. Let me check my volume, sorry. Well, okay, anyway. Um, I was in, in South Sudan uh, teaching, I, well, it's part of it. I chose to teach the local midwives. I was a midwife myself, and some of my most meaning, the deepest one of the deepest parts of myself was being a midwife. And so I chose to teach the local midwives in the villages who uh, many had never had any lesson before outside of church, never held a pencil, never looked at a picture to interpret it and just learned by watching others. Um, and uh, so those teaching uh, and anyway, I'm not sure how to tell this, but to be brief, but um, I love teaching and I loved the learning about the women, how they learned or how I could communicate with them. I didn't speak the language. I had a, uh, I ended up with four or five women helpers um, that interpreted and then 
we did the lessons in five different places. So as a team, we could figure out this didn't work. And then we talk, well, what was going on and what shall we do? And we get an idea. And then the next time it worked better and the next time it worked better and the next time it worked better. So that, and then I love the class at the teaching times were a lot of demonstration, role playing, hands on, because if I was teaching a skill and the women enacted it, I could tell if they got it or not by what their hands were doing and what they were doing. Just by looking, I could say, yes, you have it, or no, we're not there. Let's do it again or something different. So I love that observing, discovering, finding what is the key? What's the magic key that communicates? And then when they got it, it was just such a thrill and in Africa, we could sing and dance and yell and yee, 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 and just carry on when we it was such, you know, such a joy. But I think for me, uh, it was that flow, not just in those moments, but over the whole three years that I was teaching them to try to build the skill, a high, higher skill level not just one thing, but a number of things. And a network among each other. I built, uh, helped them build a network with the health practitioners who also didn't know much, with each other in their local communities, with each other as a bigger group. And, um, you know, I felt like all the time, I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know how it's gonna hold together. Uh, but I had a lot of experience in community building and I just did what I thought was true best in terms of building these networks in these communities. I wasn't getting help. I wasn't, there wasn't the support or the structure I thought that would be there in my mother organization I was working under. It was zip, absolutely unhelpful and when I got near the end of my time there, I realized, oh my God, I have built this thing and it holds together like this. It's independent of my mother organization, which is not going to be helpful at all. And I've done it. And, and it, there it was. And I turned it over. I could leave it in the hands of a few people there to monitor. And there it was, this beautiful thing, amazing, complicated. So that's my, my story. But I just love those moments of, um, I'll just tell one, one brief example was, I was teaching them how to put on a glove, you know, for a medical glove. They had never worn gloves. They're in Africa. What did they need gloves for? And I handed out the gloves. They couldn't put them on. We're like, we're, all our team was like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? And we realized they hadn't had the experience. So somebody held up a glove in, in this way. And we had to explain. You hold it up. Each of these parts of the glove is for each finger. Your thumb goes in there. You put one in there like this. And we carefully had them put on the glove and then they had the gloves on. Gloves were a sign of medical professionalism. It was entering a new, new level of capacity and we just held our gloves up and we were just singing and dancing with gloves on it was just such a moment of us saying oh my god this isn't working why that culture gap you know so that was uh, one beautiful moment that always comes to my mind is what is going on and learning how to put on a glove thank you <laughs> amazing Okay, so um, I've I've had um, yeah, I've had flow experiences um, in several ways. You know, many years ago, um, I did a lot of long distance running, and um, there would be a point in time when I would be just in a zone, running. Um, and in that experience, I would just lose, you know, time. I would run for hours. Um, 
And uh, when I was finished, I would feel very um, satisfied and very centered. More recently, in, in uh, February, I went on a five-day silent retreat in uh, Northern California. I live in Chicago. Um, I, I've never done a silent retreat before. I had no idea whether I could be silent, but I allowed myself to be vulnerable. And so I got a ticket uh, for my airfare and I planned to fly to San Francisco. I had no idea how I was going to get from San Francisco to this very little northern California town. Uh, there was no public transportation to get there. And I thought, well, maybe I will rent a car, maybe I'll uh, hire a cab. Somehow I'll get there. Uh, all I had was an address. But I didn't really want to rent a car. And um, so hours before my flight, I got an email. And it was from a woman uh, who was also going on the retreat. And she indicated that she was flying into San Francisco and was going to rent a, a car. And would I like to ride with her to the retreat house? I said, wonderful. I did, I've never met her. I didn't know who she was. Didn't know what she looked like. Uh, so I arrived in, in uh, at the airport, and um, I received a text message from her saying that her flight would be in like about 2.30 or something, and that uh, she would meet me at a gate. So I, I go to the gate, and I meet this wonderful young woman, and uh, we talk nonstop all the way to uh, this retreat house and very much in the flow of this conversation, just making connection with each other. Uh -huh. I get to the retreat and I have no idea if I can be silent for five minutes, much less five days. Um, so when the time came to be silent, uh, I complied. And the next morning, without speaking, we had some meditation. And then the rest of the day was open. There was nothing structured. So I'm in this beautiful California coast right by the sea and I just decide to go hiking um, and I am completely absorbed in the environment um, hiking paths I did not know finding my way down to the beach hiking the beach hiking up the the bluff coming back again, I lose time. Maybe, maybe I was out for four hours. And so I did this every day. And every day I was just wow. in, in the flow. Um, there was no outcome of any significance other than um, I had a sense of calm and peace, which stayed with me for days afterwards. Um, so um, then, then the last example I'll give is um, I recently facilitated a small group and a large group. Small group was about seven, the large group was about 50. And after it was all over, it was very complex, very dynamic, I sat down to write my field notes. 
I just became totally absorbed in re-experiencing the two hours. And maybe two hours later, I was done. But I was completely in the moment, in the flow, in the experience. And I felt like, this is really good. <laughs> this, this is, uh, whatever I have written here, this, this feels very integrated to me. So those are my stories. Beautiful. Yeah, it is the process in the here and now, totally immersed. Yeah. So let's hear from others. I have Kay. a. Good, Kay, please. I think I, I think I have a. You know, my experience was more, is more like from when I was at work and found sort of strange, had sort of a strange connotation with it being at work, but I was had been. I was the newbie in a corporate system. I'm, I'm an RN by background, so it was a very different kind of a, a work experience. But I had been asked to develop a um, customer service center. And um, so I was completely out of my element, but I thought, you know, I was young and, you know, you, you're, you're sort of like, you know, immortal at that time. And um, I just sort of thought, well, I'm going to pull together something that, you know, maybe no one else has thought of. And I just, for some reason, the work just resonated with me and I just loved it. And I could work for days with it, as my husband will attest. And I just lost myself in it. And nothing really ever felt like I was at work. It was it just came to me and I just, I just felt like I was at one with it and it just worked. It just came to be something that I love to do. And it was like feeling like Diana said, I was building something, you know, the pieces all came together. And when it didn't, it was like, well, yes, that makes sense. I'm not going to work with it. And when there were those moments when people said, you know, you know, I didn't think that was going to work. Yes, I can see where you're going with it. And it just, it just worked for me. And, and I didn't have to really push and shove anything. And, and it wasn't really that I, I, I thought I was going to miss my nursing end of it, but I felt like I was really caring for people doing what I was, was doing because I was building a relationship with, with service this way. And I know maybe that's not exactly what you're saying, but for me, this was, my, this was me flowing at a different level. Beautiful. Very uh, inspiring story. Thank you. All the stories that have come. Yes. Let's hear him, because we are running out of time, so we will try to. But you take your time to share your story. OK. Um, I'll, I'll do a very brief one, then. Uh, there's many. <laughs> so uh, this was about 45 years ago. And um, I was going up a river in uh, Borneo and um, on a boat. And uh, you know, it was fantastically beautiful. And, you know, so I'm enjoying it. I'm just looking at everything around me, you know, going to, like deeper into the mountains. Oh, it's incredible, you know. Um, and then suddenly it just all, um, it became even more beautiful. It became every, everything I was seeing was alive and it's just so real. And I was just totally swept up by it. And, and I was just looking and looking and, and the colors were just, you know, like, oh, I, you know, and it, it was like, a, it was like being on psychedelics without being on anything, you know, and I was just so amazed and it lasted for hours and I don't know how it happened. And then, uh, you know, this was a long, long trip. And then finally, I guess I just started getting tired after several hours and I, I just started to relax more and just, uh, it started to fade. And, um, and I was always hoping after that, that it would happen again, but it, it never did quite like that, you know, so <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, I, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my, my very brief story. I'll try to make it brief. Um, it's interesting that it was difficult to find one because I'm thinking that I can think of so many times when I wasn't in the flow. <laughs> but but so I finally came up with a story and I'll share it very briefly. Um, when I was much younger, um, um, my main thing was to be a writer, but I was also a seeker. And I spent a lot of time during that time with, I would visit different spiritual groups and this, that, and the other thing. And, um, and as an avocation, I was a freelance writer. I wrote about music. And I was in the process of writing a um, article about jazz in Philadelphia. Much to my surprise, people in Europe had written like even books about this subject. I lived in Philadelphia. I grew up there. I didn't know any, I didn't, I was amazed that there was so much. Um, but I didn't have a car, you know, I was, I was much younger and I, I had to take public transportation to get to places. And um, what happened was that I realized I'm hungry. <laughs> I have to get something to eat. And this is a, a kind of a big deal if you're a macrobiotic, you know, um, and I was, I was involved in this whole right, rice and vegetable cult and to even think that I would have to get something to eat, um, to me that meant I have to go to a McDonald's and I have to get like a um, like a, a fish fillet, and um, that would be a permissible. So I knew where this McDonald was, and I, I had to get to this other place by a certain time. And um, I get there, and a, a black man is sitting in a chair there. He looks at me. I looked at him. He goes, uh, "Hello." join me? And I said, okay, sure. I'd, I'd love to, but I have to get something to eat. I'm going to get fish fillet or something. Oh yeah, I do that too. He says, you know, I went back and I, I joined him and to make a long story short, he became my first teacher. You know, it was just an amazing experience, which I've written about, but I'm not going to go through the whole story now for a limited time, but it was like one of the most miraculous events that happened in my young life. And it, it really kind of marked me because at that time, it's like I had spent all this time visiting all these so-called spiritual teachers and their, their, their groups and their followers and everything. And I, became, I was becoming a little bit disillusioned. I was starting to wonder if there was anything to all this spirituality stuff, you know, um, um, because it's like the, the teacher was very strong. The teachers in all these different and they're all men for, in this, for, whatever, for whatever reason. They were also very strong, but the people, in my opinion, and I was a young, naive person, they were like sheep. I didn't find anything all that, you know, I was wondering if there's anything to it. And this person became the embodiment of someone that had no, came, had no pedigree, you know, and um, he said to me at one point, you're talking to somebody who is enlightened. He just said it as a matter of fact point and everything that, um, everything that he showed me, nothing disabused me of that. And he became and is my role model in terms of how I want to be in the world. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Beautiful. So, as you can see that each one of us had some beautiful flow moments in life. And as people were sharing, if you saw their faces, each other's faces, they changed. Just the memory of it and the moments that stood still for you as you were recalling. Everything around you changed. I was very touched by that, you know, the way your uh, hands and suddenly, you know, there was so much more flow in your body itself than when you started. So it's quite interesting, you know, even just talking about it brings a flow in us. And so to me, it's also that therefore you can actually create such moments for yourself. It's not something that, you know, only some great project or something like that. But if I, I believe that that is what brought me alive, then I might as well do something where I tell my inner critic to stop talking. 
first. Then I take a shower, letting the shower really touch my whole being, allowing yourself to be in that moment. Okay? And then come and listen to some music, which you like. And after that, you start feeling your flow and do whatever you need to do. And you will find that not only for 10 minutes to two hours to five hours that you get into that kind of a flow because you have canceled your inner critic. And inner critic is our logical brain which keeps biting you. You have this to do, you have that to do. And our conditioning specifically, you know, which is about uh, failure. And in India, one of the biggest conditioning is what will people say? Okay. And so therefore this fear is so instilled in people that it becomes almost internalized. Even when people have a question to ask, they don't ask. It's not spontaneous. Nothing is spontaneous. So they develop their logical brain so much that they don't know where the heart is. And it is from the heart that you actually get into the here and now process and the moment and to let yourself experience it fully. But our judgments precede us. When somebody is talking, we are judging. We don't allow that person to create an experience for us. Okay, we are comparing, we are competing. You know, what the hell is he talking about? Look at how he's dressed. You know, even when we have reached this age, these are the things which come automatically and just unconsciously. They guide us. And so when you say 45 years back, you felt this. And this has so much impact on you. And so how many such moments you've had in the last one year? last five years, or even when we are celebrating anniversary, birthdays, our mind is somewhere else. And these days it is a cell phone, of course. So we keep on getting diverted. And to me this, they call it today as mindfulness, but to me it's not really mindfulness only. Mindfulness is one technical word that they have given in order to commercialize it. So, but the fact is, we have a natural flow. I find myself that I never feel tired even after five days of intense work. Ten days of intense work. And people normally ask me that, how come, I, where do you get your energy from? And, and people half my age, they don't have that energy. They keep talking about I'm tired. I will get tired only after I finish everything. <laughs> Till then I'm so absorbed and so passionate about what I'm doing that I don't feel any tiredness. I'm not saying as if I have arrived and all that. No, I'm, what I'm talking about is really, each one of you have experienced that. And I'm sure as you said, you know, you said that you have many stories. You've just shared one story. I'm sure there, at least in the lifespan of 40 years, 50 years, you have uh, n number of story. Yet, we tend to fall back upon this process of control. 
even when our heart is saying go this way you will check with 10 people is it okay or is it not okay or you google you'll do many such thing <laughs> but your you, we have killed our instincts and intuition okay which is really uh, the most beautiful part of us we have suppressed our feelings which really actually help you to connect with your intuition because we don't want to be vulnerable being in feelings is almost like considered as a uh, he's too emotional nobody says he's too logical nowadays they have started saying little bit of that but <laughs> but they, they will always find but you know he is comes from engineering background he really comes from this and the other and what i find is that when there is a flow uh, Angelo asked me about one question as to how do you see your culture contributes to it, something of that kind, you know. So I think largely we have more tolerance and attitudinally we let things happen. we just to open our heart and say okay you can come and join me for dinner go with the flow in that sense whatever is occurring for you and you find that the whole place is becoming a community in no time i've heard from so many foreigners who come and say we never experienced this kind of hospitality anywhere else than india and it's not as you will all find all great people like that no it's not like that but i'm just saying that allowing myself to embrace what is the reality right now is what helps in creating this process okay so our spontaneity uh, i actually wanted to do many things i wanted to also do the dance kind of a thing how do you flow with the dance and uh, so to me maybe we could actually end with that we have 5 7 minutes so are, are you game for this to try yes okay so i like you to stand up from your chair okay and then you create your own music for your own dance you sing a song whatever you like but don't put on the artificial music you do whatever comes to you it could be just a noise it could be just a sound and you dance in as weird ways which you have never done before so we should unmute right yeah just do whatever your body says whatever your heart says whatever you want to try today and just be in that flow don't even bother about whether you are looking pretty or you are looking handsome or not doesn't matter okay so i like to everybody should unmute unmute yeah no no unmute yourself and and let's give full yeah yeah so I can't see your face set. <laughs> okay. So, and yes, yes. Yeah. And you know, go a little far off so that people can see you. Yeah, this is fine. You can stand here. I'll, I'll sit down. Okay. Sit. So let's yeah. start. One, two, three, and create music. Oh, 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 oh,
Okay, so let's sit down. <laughs> and just share whatever you're feeling just now, spontaneously. I feel frustrated because um, my technology does not enable me to stand up. Anyway, I had a lot of fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. I felt sort of self-conscious at first, but it was fun once I got into it. I, I had so much fun because um, I was inventing the music. First, I was inventing words that just were coming out. And then I was inventing the tunes. So that was really great. Yeah. Uh, I found that very freeing. Um, you, you stopped in between. Say that again. I said you stopped in between. I'm not sure I understand. I you said you, you stopped in between. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what are you feeling and what was happening to you? Mm. I felt very free. And I felt um, just taking in what I was hearing. Mm. And connecting to it and moving in some way with it. So that was my experience. Thank you. Yes. It, it was, uh, like you say, fun and uh, freeing. Um, this is a thought, but there's a whole um, program called Interplay that helps guide people in spontaneous, playful movement. And um, it's more than just playing, but y'all might want to look that up. Interplay. Yeah. And Enzo. Oh, I already, I already spoke. I was saying I was a little bit frustrated because my, my uh, headphones are connected to something I couldn't stand up. But anyway, I had, <laughs> I had fun. So, and of course, I'm thinking I, I, need to, I need to keep everybody focused because the flow is going to stop at, 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 um, in three minutes. So. <laughs> so I'm thinking that uh, we, we have to have um, Shishma come back and, and do it again and we'll We'll make sure that she has yeah, a thousand sure. people, or at so, least fifteen. I want to. <laughs> I enjoyed myself. I haven't done this kind of thing for quite some time, you know. So I was. I just want to end the session with a poem, which says, "Let the ink flow. Let your words flow from deep within." Let the ink smear across the page from the tip of your pen. Feel every emotion, hold every feeling, entice the reader's eyes as they skip along each line dancing. Then once your story, sadly, it reaches an end, leave the reader Leave the reader locked within, forever immortalizing the words your heart has bled. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. That's the flow. You know, I, th that's a great segue, um, Sharma, um, Shushma, because um, next month at this time, uh, uh, my friend is going to teach uh, us a workshop on, uh, or something like this, uh, spirituality and writing. And for her, she sees writing as meditation. So shameless plug. Thank you very much for uh, letting we, me we share all, with you. Maybe we can all have one, one word, one phrase, just to sum it up so we can, uh, you know, bring something into the room. I'm just, my word is del delight, delighted. I'm very delighted. Relaxed and calm. Hi. Relaxed and grateful. Gratitude. Gratitude. Connection. I feel connected with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>